All right, what up, two? Back at you. Like I said in my last video, I didn't want to do a full video on how I got it done. I just want to make a quick video to show you quickly what I did do. But you can see if you compare that to the last video. If you see, this uh, gap is closed. It's all at uh, within my tolerance of, I think this one was 3.98 and 4.02, I believe. And I want a four, a four millimeter gap. So this is uh, where I'm at right now. I still have to weld the backhand side of it. Now, what I did was I went, I brought a few of those different rods. Uh, I have a rod right here. I brought a few of these rods here. Brought different sizes, and I went with a bigger size, which is this one here. So I went with a bigger, a bigger round stock, which is this one here. Um, it's much wider. Well, it's, it's a, quite a bit wider. I think I showed on the last video, but I welded that all in. Once I got it all welded in, then I just went down and I made sure that all my gapping was at uh, within that tolerance. So if it was low on one area, I put some weld in. And then if it was high on one area, I grounded it down. When I put the weld in, I try to overfill it and then come back through. While I'm doing the video, I can see like right in here. I can add a little bit more weld, which I'll probably do tomorrow. I'm going to put a mark here and I'll, um, add a little bit more weld here and then grind, grind that back. Um, it just looks weird to me. Maybe is that at the, where I need it to be, but I'm going to double check it, triple check it now and, uh, make sure. Then on top of that, this piece right here was high, oh, higher than here. Now this is all boogered up a little bit, but. Um, I'm not worried about that. I'll be able to fill some of that in, uh, hammer and dolly some of that up and then fill it in. But what I did was I cut a pie here and then I pushed it down and welded it back over. And that's all I did. Then I had to add more, uh, a smaller piece of rod. This here, I had to add this one, which is a little bit smaller. And it oversized this, but then I was able to grind it back to get the gap that I want. So this here is the semi-finished product. You see the bottom lines up all the way through. The gap lines up all the way through. It's going to be nice and smooth on the gap. Uh, and then next would be, after I weld the backhand side, get, all that, get that all done. Next would be uh, lining up the fenders, making sure those fenders are A1 straight on there, uh, star body working the lines on the, on the fenders to match the lines on the door at the end, like this part here. Then making sure these gaps are A1, uh, where I want them to be, and then just keep on moving on. So yeah, just stay tuned to, I, I wanted to drop off a, a little video. Didn't want to do a, like a 20 minute video like what I did last time. Just want to uh, show you guys the gap and where I'm at with the gap, you see the body line all the way through lines going straight into that fender. So everything is lined up the way it should be. The gap is nice and smooth all the way through. And again, you have that gap. And then I walk you around over here. And then you have this gap. It's the same thing. It looks real nice. And that's what you want. So this one here, I started messing with it a little bit. But you can tell... Like right up in here, it's gonna it's gonna uh, rub a little bit. So I gotta make sure that all of this stuff is nice and tight. Um, we'll go from there, and then you know finish up my uh, my my uh, rear bumper and what I was doing with that. I'm gonna finish that up, and then so I can get ready to suck everything in on here and get ready to start working on that front that front bumper. So yeah, to just stay tuned. I'm bringing some more of this footage, man. And I got a couple of other ideas that I want to throw at this thing. And yeah, we'll keep on rolling. So stay tuned. Hit that like button. If, anyway, I'll holler. Y'all have a good one.